Well, there is a lamb. May the anointed one continually be held in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, um, I, I'm, I'm sure the church will have been very familiar with my sermon that I always like to start my sermon by telling us um, a story. And today I have the story told by a minister of God, an uh, American, a Canadian America, um, American uh, theologian, uh, Reverend Dr. H. A. Ironside. And the story he told was a story which he used to illustrate the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, he said that some time ago, while visiting Texas, he had the opportunity to visit a sheep ranch where two female sheep were pregnant. And that the two female sheep that were pregnant gave birth to lambs on the same day and at the same time. However, during the childbirth, one of the sheep died, but the lamb survived. The second sheep lost her own lamb, but she was alive. So in that ranch, according to Reverend Ironside, there was a situation of one sheep dying of childbirth and one lamb dead after birth. Now the owner of the ranch then took the living lamb and put it in the pen with the living sheep to see if she would nurse it. However, the living sheep smelled the lamb and walked away. Apparently she knew that it was not her own. The owner of the ranch thought of what to do so he took the skin off the dead lamb and wrapped, the living, wrapped it around the living lamb and put it back in the pen. When the living sheep smell, went close to it, smelled the blood of her own lamb, she accepted this little lamb and began to nurse it. Brethren, this story to me is the greatest picture of the cross. For without Christ, man is hopeless for eternity. God will not accept man into heaven on man's own works. But when we stand before God covered in the blood of his own son, whom he will recognize on us through that same blood, he accepts us and allows us to be part of his family. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. We thank you for giving us Jesus. As we go into your word, we ask that you will grant us understanding and help us to assimilate your word and to be able to live by it for your glory and for our blessing. Speak to each heart, including the vessel that you are using to speak, that your name may be glorified. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The text of my sermon I have taken from the Gospel reading, John chapter 1 and verse 29. There it says, The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. The theme of this sermon is, Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold, the Lamb of God. In our gospel reading, 
John the Baptist made this declaration, saying, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This was at the very start of the ministry of John the Baptist himself. He proclaimed Jesus, the Christ, in a word or words that described the destiny of Jesus Christ. He proclaimed Jesus with words that described the destiny of Jesus Christ, i.e. the sacrificial agony and death on the cross that Jesus was going to go through for the sins of mankind, for the sin of both yourself and mine and the entire world. John the Baptist, on seeing Jesus Christ, did not say, behold, the great example. He did not say, behold, the great teacher. Mind you, Jesus Christ is the great, greatest example that man can have for his life. And is also the greatest teacher. But John the Baptist did not declare him so. John the Baptist did not also say, a great moral example but jesus is our great moral example john the baptist did not say behold a great teacher of holiness and love we all know that jesus christ himself is love full of love and love made him to give his life but john the baptist did not decline him in any of these ways rather he declared him as a lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. Why would John the Baptist call Jesus Christ the lamb? The lamb of God. In reference to Jesus Christ. What is the significance of this proclamation which John the Baptist made? The significance is that God John the Baptist was making the people around him and you and I really need today to know that as at that time that John made the declaration, he was telling us that God was about to sacrifice Jesus Christ for humanity. God was about to sacrifice Jesus for humanity. God was about to give his only begotten son and to sacrifice his life. In the temple in Israel, as we read in the Old Testament, we know that God required animal sacrifices to atone for the sins of Israel. And it was often a lamb that would be killed for such sacrifices. The book of Leviticus chapter 4 verses 32 all through to 35 gives us a record of those kind of sacrifices for sin in Israel. But these animal sacrifices then was just a foreshadow of the perfect and complete sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Animal sacrifice is an important thing found all through this, this scripture. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, that the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood and that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So it was important for sacrifice to be done for every sin that man commits. Hence, the in and out sacrifices that were done at that time. We can say that even when Adam and Eve sinned, what happened in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, was God himself taking an animal, skinning the animal, and giving the animal skin to humanity, to Adam and Eve, to cover their shame, to cover the consequences of their shameful acts, of their disobedience, of their rebellion. So God performed that sacrifice. 
using an animal because he had to kill an animal before the skin can be taken out. Again, in Noah, I mean, in, uh, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 21, we see the story of Noah after the flood. Noah had to sacrifice animals to God. He made a burnt offering of sacrifice to God, which the Bible says the, the smoke went up to God and God was so pleased that he said he would no longer destroy man, destroy the world with water. That is in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 21. So these numerous sacrifices done in, by the nation of Israel then were performed according, were all performed according to specific procedures prescribed by the Almighty God. And what were these procedures? One, the animal had to be spotless. This is why Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, is the spotless sacrifice that Jesus, that God had to make for you and I. Number two, the person offering the sacrifice had to identify with the animal. The Almighty God identified with Jesus himself. Because Jesus Christ, the Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he, Jesus Christ, was the Word. So God himself already identified by the, by the specification he gave them, the nation of Israel, he identified with Jesus. And third thing is that it is the person offering the animal that had to inflict death upon the animal. What a great sacrifice, which meant that God himself deliberately allowed the infliction of death upon his son, Jesus Christ, for you and I, for the whole world to have salvation, for our sins to be forgiven, that we do not have to go through sacrifices anymore. But what do we find in the sacrifices of the nation of Israel at that time? Although these sacrifices provided a temporary covering at that time, anytime they took their lamb or their lamb or their sheep for sacrifice, it covered their sin, that particular sin. But the moment they step out and committed another sin, they have to go back again with another sacrifice. So it never took away the sin of man. Hence, under the old covenant, the Bible says the priests, ministers before the altar, they after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, but which never took away the sins of man, as recorded in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11. What is it that God has not done for us? To have given us his own begotten son, sacrificed him in a way that you and I need no sacrifice anymore. You can imagine how much you would have to spend with the level of decadence, the level of sin, the level of corruption, the level of the way the heart of man is corrupted these days. You can imagine the level of sacrifices that man will have to make to be acceptable or accepted by God. Just as during our prayer meeting um, um, last night, uh, the bishop was telling us that one minister said, if God can open the heart of the person sitting next to you in church for you to see what the heart is, you may have to, you may decide to run out of the church. That is just to tell us that the heart of man, according to the word of God, can be anything without Christ. So the declaration that John the Baptist made as seen in the theme of this sermon, the Lamb, behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. This can be segmented into three parts. The first part being behold. Behold. Behold is a complete statement. It can be come and see. It can be lift up your eyes and see. It can be look forward and see. It can be focused on this man and look at him. And then the second part is the Lamb of God. When he says, behold, behold who? The Lamb of God. He didn't say a Lamb 
of God. The Lamb of God. The article D showing that he alone is capable of this sacrifice that will need no other sacrifice. And finally, he now says the third part, who takes away the sin of the world. The sin of the world. Behold, as soon as, taking the first part, which is behold, as soon as John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he said, behold. Behold means to look with focus, to concentrate on this man. Therefore, John was calling everyone around him to listen to this man, to look unto this man, to remove their own focus from him. Remember, John had been the focus of everyone because he was the one preaching in the wilderness. He was the one telling them, this is right, this is wrong. So they, they had focused on him as the one that was preaching. But now he was calling everyone around, don't focus on me anymore. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold this Jesus. The Lamb of God, that is the second part. He, made, he, he, he presented Jesus in the image of sacrifice. The image of the sacrificial lamb. He says, the lamb of God. Every Israelite knows what a lamb stands for. When you talk of a lamb, the first thing that comes to their mind is sacrifice. Because the lamb is the only thing that is acceptable for a certain category of sin. So when you talk of the lamb, they say, oh, the sacrifice. So John the Baptist was telling them, behold, you might have been doing all manner of sacrifices, but look at this one. In other words, he declared what Jesus Christ was going to do. He declared the reason for Jesus being there. Jesus Christ is the lamb slain for the sin of man. John the Baptist did not say the sins of man, but the sin of man. And how does that mean? It means that it goes back in time. He says the sin of the whole world. In other words, even before the foundation of the world, the sin of Adam and Eve, the sin that we are committed even before the birth of Jesus Christ, Jesus is here to take all away. So when man sinned in the Garden of Eden, Jesus is the animal that God slain to cover the nakedness. In Genesis 3.21. When Abraham was to slay Isaac and God provided a lamb in place of Isaac, Jesus Christ is that lamb that was provided in Genesis chapter 22, verse 6 to 8. Even at the Passover, Jesus told them that he is the Passover lamb for Israel in Luke chapter 22, verse 14 to 20. In Leviticus, the Levitical sacrifices that the Israelites were doing then, Jesus was also the lamb that is the guilt offering, as stated in Leviticus, the whole of Leviticus chapter 4. Jesus is the Isaiah's lamb to the slaughter, ready to be shown in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. He said he was led into the to led to the altar like a lamb and said without, spoke no word, it was Jesus Christ that Isaiah was referring to. When each lamb was slain, they fulfilled the role in their death. However, Jesus Christ the lamb had to come to perfect this role so that the sacrifices would not be a daily sacrifice anymore. And so the third part of the statement of John the Baptist Behold, the first part, the Lamb of God, the second part, and the third part, who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus takes away the sin of man, bearing it upon himself, and taking them away completely. God says that all your sins he has taken to the sea of forgetfulness. It's because of the blood, because of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ did. Because he does not need to die a second time. 
unlike the sacrifices that were being done in the olden days, that the priests have to do it again and again and again. This was once and for all done for you and I and the whole world by God. So John the Baptist said he died for the sin of the whole world. Not the sins. So how do we understand this? It's John, John the Baptist is telling us that what God has done through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ is that he took the whole mass of human transgression, bound all together in one black, awful bundle, as depicted on Good Friday, and lay all at once upon the shoulders, the shrinking shoulders, of shivering shoulders of Jesus Christ, to completely bear it all away. Unlike the priest that will perform sacrifices again and again. Jesus Christ did it for you and I once and for all. And therefore, the book of Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 26 to 28, that such a high priest truly meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sin, exalted above heavens. Unlike the other high priest, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sin, because Christ is sinless, and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. For the new, for the law appoints as high priest men in all their weakness, but the oath the oath which came after the law, that is the oath of God, appointed the Son who has been made perfect forever. And what is this telling us? Just as John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. One can only imagine the volume of sacrifices that one would have to perform where Jesus not sacrificed for our sins by the Almighty God. John the Baptist therefore declared, Behold the Lamb of God, with the intention of pointing all those around him to the message of the cross. That only the message of the cross can atone for the sin of man, no matter how terrible one's life might have been. Man only needs to behold the Lamb of God and submit to his lordship and he will make things right. Brethren, is anyone still here? Is anyone here today still struggling with sin guilt? Still struggling with the consequences of sin and wondering whether you can get out of a sinful life or whether you can be forgiven at all. The word of God to you today is that the sacrifice made by God with the life of Jesus, the Lamb of God, is big enough for the whole world, including your own sin. You only need to behold him. Is anyone's case that of backsliding? And you no longer know your stand with the Trinity, with eternity. The same word is for you today, that in this season of personal renewal, behold the Lamb of God. He already took everything upon himself and it was sacrificed for you. The sacrifice of Jesus is enough to contain even the backsliding child, just like the prodigal son. We say in the lyric of the last hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. It says, He, Jesus, comes to break oppression, to set the captives free, to take away transgression and rule in equity. He comes to give speedy succor to those who suffer wrong, to help the poor and needy, and bid the weak be strong, to give them songs for sign and turn their darkness to light. Brethren, this is the message of John the Baptist to the world around him and to you and I. John the Baptist knew whom Jesus is. 
Because Jesus at baptism, um, John the Baptist at the baptism of Jesus Christ, had the voice from heaven that declared to him whom Jesus was. In John, whom Jesus is, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. And this, John the Baptist himself confessed in the gospel that we read, verse 32 to 34, when he said, I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize the water told me, the man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptize with Holy Spirit. I have seen and testified that this is God's chosen son, chosen one. John the Baptist heard the voice from heaven, recognized Jesus, accepted him as the chosen one, as the Lamb of God, and declared him to the world around him as the Lamb of, of God, who is taking away the sin of the whole world. That in, 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 in other words, John the Baptist pointed his listeners, having known Christ himself, he pointed his listeners to the cross. He pointed his listeners to Jesus. He pointed the world around him to Jesus. What does this tell you and I? As children of God, you who have known Christ, I who have known Christ, those of us in the congregation today who have given our lives to Christ, as John the Baptist declared to the world around him, God expects you and I to declare to the world around us those who are still suffering under the oppression of sin, those who are still suffering from their own wrongs and do not know how to turn away from me, those who are still suffering wrongly and do not know who to turn to. We, God expects you and I to point them, to tell them, behold, the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the whole world. So that when they behold him, they took and turned to him, just as we see that in the declaration of John the Baptist, after his declaration, the disciples followed Jesus, as we read in that same gospel, going down to verse 40, verse 39, 40, 41. Andrew, first of all, had, and Andrew did not keep it to himself. He ran to call his brother, Peter, to come and see that he has seen the Son of God. This is what God expects of you and I, that having beheld this Christ, having been, having been accepted into the family of God, having been made children of God and living by his word, we are not expected to keep it to ourselves, but to go into the world, but to call the world around us to behold to call those who are still under the oppression of Satan through sin to behold Christ, that their sin may also be forgiven and their lives redeemed. And this is part of what we read in the Old Testament as prophesied by Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 6. He said, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of, of the earth. Having accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, living by his word, living on his word, enjoying the benefits of salvation, we are no, you and I are not expected to keep it to ourselves. We are to be light to the Gentiles, that salvation may reach the end of the earth. Has salvation reached everyone around you? Because according to the word and as declared by the John the Baptist that this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Every man without God is hopeless and man cannot come to God except through Christ. So it behoves you and I to call them to behold Christ. It was John's declaration, as I said, that brought the disciples to Jesus and said, we want to follow you wherever you go. 
And he said, come, follow me. And Andrew also followed and went to call his brother. The Bible says, in verse 40 of that John chapter 1, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who had what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing, verse 41, Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. That is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. My brothers and sisters, how many people have you brought to Jesus since you knew him and continued to behold him for your daily living? In conclusion, just as the little lamb in the story told at the beginning of this sermon was nothing to the living lamb until that little lamb was covered with the blood of the lamb of the ill, that is the sheep. Man without Christ, without being covered by the blood of Christ, is hopeless for eternity. Without the covering of the blood of the lamb of God, man is unacceptable to God. That's your neighbor. That's your colleague, that's your family member who has not known him yet. Are you keeping quiet or are you calling the attention to behold, to behold the Lamb of God that has taken away their sin so that they do not continue to suffer under the oppression of sin? Finally, my brothers and sisters, as children of God, wrapped in the blood of Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul told us in the book of 1 Corinthians, verses 8 to 9 that we read, that Jesus Christ the Lamb, that because we are covered with the blood of Jesus the Lamb, we are accepted by God, and we have become part of God's family. God will also keep us firm to the end so that we will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you and I will remain blameless in the name of Jesus. And to remain blameless, we need to tell those around us. Because if Andrew did not call Peter, Peter may never know Christ. And we know the, we know the life of Christ, Peter and the many he brought to Christ. We know the, 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 the epistle written by Peter. Because Andrew brought him. Whereas nothing is said of Andrew again after Jesus. The Jesus' is death and, re and resurrection. But Peter continued because Andrew would not keep his discovery to himself alone. You have discovered Jesus Christ. You have beheld him. Don't keep him to yourself alone. As children of God, wrapped in the blood of Jesus, let us call the world around us to behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.